What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel for today's video We're gonna be checking out the Transformers Studio Series Rise of the Beasts leader class Optimus Primal and here we have him fully maximized into his beast mode and detail wise he is looking fantastic So as we check out the face sculpt brilliant i really think one of their best i mean check out the cybernetic eyes the nostrils the scarring that we have there to the forehead it looks awesome and the chest design is just as nicely detailed as that head sculpt so we get the maximal logo some sick scarring there to the torso and i also love the arm design so due to the way it transforms basically the fists reverse inside themselves to reveal an additional set which are just for the beast mode so i think that's a first for a primal figure and proportion wise just looks great i mean check out each finger which has been sculpted to make it look as if though it's individual. So that's great. And the legs look okay from the front. I mean, I do quite like the piston detail as well as the foot design. And even as we flip it here to the base, they have accurately sculpted the soles of the feet to match the CGI design. But unfortunately, as you check it out here from the side and especially the back, this looks awful. I mean, I really do find this to be an example of maybe Takara Tomi over engineering for the sake of this costing the price of a leader class. Because if you check out the mainline Voyager, personally, I think the legs for both robot and base mode look decent and the transformation is simple easy whereas this one is a lot more complex and personally I find to look worse for it and if they had got rid of these feet this would have been a perfect base mode because with the exception of these I think everything looks awesome I mean check out the spinal column this has been just as nicely detailed as the front of the figure so yeah that really is such a shame in my opinion but articulation wise the head's on a ball joint so it can look up it can look down rotate left to right we get an amazing jaw articulation so check this out. I'm the Maximal that's going to rip out your spark. Unfortunately, no repulsor in the back of the throat. I think that's maybe something they could have done. But they did detail the tongue, so that's pretty cool. The shoulders can rotate all the way around. They can hinge out to the side. Specifically for beast mode, we get an amazing butterfly joint, which is just great. Especially for posing him on all fours. Or maybe if you want him beating his chest just before he's about to go into battle alongside the Autobots, then that is great. We get a bicep rotation, elbow bend. So if you wanted the armor panel that you'll see, in robot mode to be on the outside of the beast mode arm then that's absolutely a look that you can have although officially I believe that it's supposed to be on the inside we get wrist rotation as well as two individual segments here for the fingers so that's pretty cool and unfortunately the legs kind of let him down in the articulation department because they can kick forwards only that far they can't kick back at all they will hinge out to the sides but there is no ankle pivot at all so basically I think in terms of the legs their best pose is just being brought forwards to kind of help aid having him on all fours because Besides that, you're really not going to get much out of it at all, unfortunately. But all in all, in terms of beast mode, detail-wise, I think this guy is looking pretty spectacular. Now, as we check out a few comparisons for the beast mode, during this segment, I will keep Primal on all fours, as that was primarily the main look that we saw from the movie. So, first up, here he is alongside the mainline Voyager, and detail and scale-wise, of course, Studio Series is once again superior. But to kind of go back to my earlier point, I still think mainline has the better back legs. They're just way more cleaner, and it's kind of a shame that Takara couldn't have struck a balance between the two. You know, had they kept the simplistic conversion of the mainline, yet still retained the level of detail from Studio Series. Personally, I think that would have been amazing. But yeah, overall, hands down, Studio Series is again for the win. Here is how he sizes up alongside the Transformers Kingdom Voyager Optimus Primal. Studio Series Deluxe Class Air Razor. Voyager Class Rhinox. And I think the pairing between these two is actually pretty smack onto the film. Studio Series Cheetor. Core Class Freezer and RC. Deluxe Class Bumblebee and Mirage, Voyager Class Battle Trap and the Buzzworthy Bumblebee Optimus Prime. And these two in particular, I think, are pretty decent in terms of scale. You know, just as the Autobots and the Maximals are about to charge into the final battle, Primal did roughly come up to around the waistline of Optimus Prime. So, yeah, I don't think this works out too badly. The Big Daddy, the Takara Tomy Ultimate Optimus Primal. And finally, for now, the Leader Class Scourge. So, now let's maximize Optimus Primal into his robot mode. So, the first step would be to take the shoulders and hinge these here out to the sides. The next step would be to spin around here to the side and take this part of the leg and begin slowly pulling it away from what will become the thigh of the robot mode. So, just begin to kind of extend these hinge joints here upwards until you reach around this point, which is then when you're going to want to take the beast mode foot and slowly begin shifting this section here up. Now, this is a super sturdy joint. So, once you reach the around about this point then you're going to want to grab the robot mode foot 
bring this section here down, flip out the front toes, we can then spin around here to the back, take the knee guard, hinge this piece here up, and then take the entire shin guard and shift this section here down. Once you've done that, now is where you can come back around here to the side, and this tiny little piece of sculpted in detail should slide into that little notch, so begin to completely shift the beast mode foot up, and as we check out the inside of this joint, there is a tiny little circular peg which should hopefully slide into this little notch, so snap that section there into place, we can then take this hinge joint here, slide this section down, and then this little hollow cavity should snap into that tab, so bring this piece here in, until that does peg into place, we can then flip here to the underside, take what will become the heel spur of Optimus Primal's robot mode, and repeat the exact same process on the opposite side, bang! Once both legs are fully transformed, we can now spin this guy around here to the back, and begin work on the arms. So, first of all, you're going to want to take the fingers, and make sure that these do actually snap into place. This is a vital step of the conversion, and if you miss this, it's going to cause for some issues later on down the line. What we can then do is take this panel, and hinge this section here upwards and then come around here to the underside and take this section and pull it away which should then hopefully reveal both sets of the hands so once you reach to this point you're then going to want to take the beast mode hand sculpt and rotate this around until the back of the hand is facing this gauntlet piece which should hopefully allow for enough clearance for us to rotate this section here all the way around once you've done that we can then take this beast mode hand again and flip it back around and then slide this section here down take this panel slide this over the top and as we spin around here to the back there is a tiny little tab which should slide into this slot so snap that there into place and then this section is on a slider joint so you're going to want to utilize both of these hinge joints to just slide this section here down just like that we can then bring this piece down take what will become the fist of the robot mode swing this piece around and again rinse and repeat the same steps on the opposite side Bang! Once both of the arms are fully transformed, now we can get stuck into my personal favourite part about the conversion, that being the torso and the chest. So, the first step would be to flip around here to what originally was the front of the primal beast mode, and then take the torso piece, extend this section here forwards until it pops out of place, and then rotate this section here all the way around just like this. We can then take the beast mode head and shift this upwards so that it looks as if though he's gazing upon Unicron. We can then flip around here to the back, and you're going to want to take what was basically his butt flap and pull this away so that it completely detaches the backpack. We can then take this section, flip this back upon itself, rotate this section here all the way around which does reveal some incredible sculpting in detail and then that little slot should peg into this tab so snap this section here into place. Now is where we can take this entire section and slide this over the top of Primal's beast mode head. So slide this up and over. We can then take this panel, hinge this underneath, and then completely collapse this here over the top, just like this. Now, personally, I would not recommend to tab any of this in just yet, as before we do that, you're gonna wanna grab a hold of these silver sections and pop the front chest here forwards, just like this. We can then lift Primal's head back up, and this is in fact on a slider joint. So shift this here upwards, rotate this section here all the way around, and then take Primal's head and fold it so that it is again looking as if though it's looking upwards. We can then compress this section down, snap this piece here into place, and for a finishing touch, all you're going to want to do is line this little slot here up with this tab. So snap that section there into place. And bang, here we have Optimus Primal fully maximized into his robot mode, and it's a very good looking robot mode. So, as we check out the details, the face sculpt is decent. I mean, this is neither my preference nor actually accurate to the movie, because when Primal does very briefly retract his mouth guard, he has nostrils, and it was a really strange look. In some ways, I'm kind of glad that they did base this more on the concept art, but either way, I think it would have been much better had they just given him the mouth plate, because that was primarily what we saw in the film. But really nice details here for the chest, you know, much like the beast mode, he does have quite a bit of severe battle damage there, so you can see a few scratches, a few slashes, a few chunks missing from the sculpt, so that's really awesome. And as I mentioned previously, due to the way the arms transform, he also gets a brand new set of fists for the robot mode, so that is a great attention to detail, you know, the forearm pads look so big and chunky, but then saying that, the overall design is very sleek like we saw in the movie, I mean, there really and truly isn't too much kibble just hanging off of him, so that's really great. 
great. You know, the legs look awesome. I like the piston detail, the shins, and in particular, the foot design. This is so accurate to the movie with the tiny little heel spurs. They've even detailed the underside of the foot, so that's pretty cool. But as we flip this guy around here to the back, it's always the back. Much like in the beast mode where the robot mode feet were visible, we now have the beast mode feet visible. And it really does suck because with the exception of these, for the most part, it's a really great looking robot mode. And I'm certain there would have been an easy way for them to have concealed these. My only thinking is that perhaps this is so good that Takara Tomi had to kind of put flaws on this guy so that eventually when they do take this into their MPM line, there are a few things for them to fix. That was kind of where I thought they shot themselves in the foot with the Studio Series and then the MPM Blackout because the SS version was amazing. When it got round to the Masterpiece, whilst it did end up being better, there weren't too many things for them to ultimately tidy up. So I do wonder if that's intentional, but we get some really nice piston detail there for the back of the knees, the spinal column. He does have a big old chunk here on the back, which initially I thought looked kind of hunch-like, but he did kind of have a neck guard in the film. So I guess in some ways this section here is supposed to replicate that, but even the detail here for the arms looks pretty awesome. Now, in terms of his articulation, the head is on a ball joint, so it can look up, it can look down. If it's a fight you want, then you've got one. It can also be rotated left to right. The shoulders can go the full 360. They can hinge out to the sides. We get a rotation at the bicep. Technically, you could utilize the butterfly joint that we saw in the beast mode, although they swing in the opposite direction. So yeah, it's unfortunately not too useful, but we do get a great wrist rotation. And despite this being a brand new hand sculpt for the robot mode, he still has the same level of articulation as we saw in the beast mode. So the fingers are articulated at two points. Unfortunately, there is no ab crunch. And considering ultimately this is a Voyager scale release being priced as a leader class, I think that should have been included, especially as we saw something very similar to that with the Buzzworthy Prime. But the waist can rotate the 4360, which is pretty cool. The hips can kick forward to that far as well as roughly back to that far. They'll also kick out to the side, so that's a pretty sick high kick. Fire rotation as well as a 90 degree bend here at the knee, and as you saw, if you utilize the transformation hinge joint, you do get slightly past that. The knee pads can also hinge forwards and backwards, so you can flare them out to make him appear a little more dynamic. And in terms of the foot, this can pivot forwards, backwards, rock side to side, which is awesome. And due to his transformation, we also get a tiny bit of toe bend, which is great, especially for getting him again into some of those slightly more dynamic dynamic poses. So overall, in terms of robot mode, with ultimately the exception of the beast mode feet, I think that much like the beast mode, this is near enough a 10 out of 10 Optimus Primal. Now as we check out Optimus Primal's accessories, first up we do get a pair of cyber blades, which can be combined, which I believe is the only look that we saw for these in the film. Or alternatively, if you wanted them as two individual weapons, you can also split them which is something that you'll want to do once you whack out the additional chain accessory. Now, whilst he never actually used the chain in the movie, it was featured in the very first teaser trailer for the Transformers Rise of the Beast movie. So overall, I think it's a really great inclusion. It can become a little annoying, especially as it has been cast in two different pieces. So loves to split right down the middle, but it is very well articulated. I mean, check out all of those individual hinge joints. You really can get primal into some pretty sick poses, you know, swinging this around, taking out the Terracons with it. So that's pretty awesome. Or alternatively, if it's a fight you want, then you've got one, as the chain is compatible with Battle Trap, who, despite using this quite a lot in the movie, I mean, it did kind of end up becoming his demise, he never actually came with one. So, it's great that the accessories are kind of cross-compatible, I guess in some ways, some of these accessories can act as upgrades for some of the previous Rise of the Beast characters, which, talking of, we also get included the Energon Axe for Optimus Prime, which unfortunately was never included with the Rise of the Beast Voyager figure, so that's awesome. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, no paint detail on it whatsoever, but it has at the very least been sculpted pretty nicely and overall really does match what we saw in the film, especially when he goes up against Scourge during that amazing museum battle sequence. And then the final and possibly best out of the bunch, we get the Transwarp Key, which has been so nicely detailed as well as painted and can be accurately split into two individual components. So you can give one half to the Autobots and the Maximals and the other half to the Terracons and Unicron. And I never ever thought that we would see a Transwarp Key toy. So wicked inclusion. I hope in the future we can see more Transformers artifacts included with some of these Studio Series figures. And then in terms of some weapons, storage. You can store both of the Cyber Blades on his backpack, which is pretty cool. Super accurate to Beast Wars, and the Energon Axe that Prime includes can kind of be slung over the side of his hip, which I think is a banging look. No official storage in robot mode for the chain nor the transwarp key, but I guess if it really bothered you that much, you could have him holding both of those, which honestly wouldn't be a terrible look. 
Now, as we check out a few robot mode comparisons, on the left-hand side, we have the Studio Series Leader Optimus Primal compared to the right, which is the Voyager Mainline Primal. Now, there is a night and day difference in terms of scaling and accuracy, but one thing that I want you guys to bear in mind is that this is roughly half the price of the Studio Series version, and enjoyability-wise, I'd say it's just as good. I mean, this is super fun to mess around with in both robot and beast mode, and has a way more straightforward conversion when in comparison here to the SS version. So, so ultimately, it really does just depend on whether or not you guys want accuracy over enjoyability. This is still enjoyable, but I have found myself kind of coming back to this guy and transforming him more than I have to the SS version. But as we just compare them side by side, really it's just a night and day difference. I mean, the Studio Series upgrade in terms of accuracy is still most definitely present here with the Optimus Primal. So you guys let me know down in the comment section below out of the two, which is the one you will be keeping in your collections. Next up, here is the Transformers Kingdom Optimus Primal, which is practically a Beast Wars version. So it's kind of cool to compare where Primal started off and now where he's currently at in the live action movies. Here is how he sizes up alongside two Transformers Core Class figures. So we have Freezer and RC, Deluxe Class Mirage and Bumblebee, Voyager Class Cheetor and Rhinox, Optimus Prime and Battle Trap. Leader class Scourge, and unfortunately we never really saw these two actually go up against each other in the movie, which I thought kind of sucked because the second Optimus Primal kind of whacked out the I'm the Maximal that's going to rip out your spark. I thought it was all going to go down, but unfortunately it ended up being Prime who took out Scourge and not Primal, nor at the very least both of them. Can you guys imagine if Prime and Primal both went up against Scourge? Personally, I think that would have made for an even more badass ending. Here is the Yolo Park Model Kit Optimus Primal, which is the closest thing that at the moment I have in my collection, which matches the CGI design. So considering this guy transforms, I think Hasbro did a pretty good job because in the accuracy department, it's pretty dead on to what we saw here from this non-transforming model kit. And then finally, here he is alongside, again, the Takara Tomy Ultima Optimus Primal. And so, wrapping up on this review for the Transformers Studio Series Leader Class, Optimus Primal. Overall, I think this is a pretty fantastic figure. Hasbro definitely had their work cut out when it came to this character, as I personally never thought Beast Wars in live action would work until I saw Ron Perlman's portrayal of Optimus Primal, which hands down has got to be one of the best I have ever seen. He in the movie was an absolute standout. I hope to see him again in the future, but getting back to this figure, amazing detail across the board, both the Beast and the robot mode looks sick. My biggest issue would have to be the robot and the beast feet clearly being visible in either mode. It seems like such a simple thing for them to fix, yet they haven't decided to do so. And considering this guy is roughly only Voyager in terms of scale, yet warrants the price of a leader, that is something which I definitely think they could have improved upon. My only thinking is that maybe they left this floor on this guy so that when eventually they do take Optimus Primal into their masterpiece line, they have things to fix because if they were to fix that issue on this guy, he would be pretty much flawless and there really wouldn't be a need to pick up a masterpiece. But all in all, this is definitely one of the best transforming Optimus Primal figures that I've so far checked out. And if you've collected any of the Maximals from the Studio Series line, then you have to get their leader in order to complete the lineup. And as I mentioned previously, he was a standout character from the film. So he's most definitely going to be quite popular. I'd love to get your thoughts on this Optimus Primal down in the comment section below. What do you guys think? And until my next video, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.